Trump transition team co-chair Tulsi Gabbard has been on a tear through the country, campaigning for Donald Trump in battleground and blue strongholds. In the last two weeks, she's visited more than a dozen states, reaching out to Democrats who are disaffected with Kamala Harris. Here to tell us what she's seeing and hearing on the ground is Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi, it's so great to have you on this morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good to see you. Thank you so much. So it's been fascinating to see how the Trump campaign is being very strategic about how they're using you and RFK and deploying you out to places that are blue, like in Wisconsin, in that Madison area. Um, but you've been doing, you've been with the campaign for, for quite a while. What have you been seeing and what kinds of things have been changing um, as you've gone along in these months on the campaign? Uh, well, there's a lot of energy building, that's for sure, and it's palpable on the ground. I just want to share some of the really incredible and unique experiences we've had. That, that event that we just held in Madison, Wisconsin a few days ago, uh, at, at every one of these events that I've been doing with Bobby Kennedy, I asked the audience, raise your hand if you're a Democrat or a former Democrat. And in almost every event, uh, somewhere between you know 35 to 50 percent of the room will raise their hand. It wow. was no different in Madison. The cool thing was this, though, when when their hands went up, there's probably a couple thousand people in the hall there. The rest of the audience started to turn around and look around, and they all stood up and cheered and welcomed wow. them and just surrounded them really with love and kindness. And I had so many people come up to me at the end of that saying, I came in here afraid. I've never been to a political rally before. I didn't know what to expect. I'm a Democrat, lifelong Democrat, never voted before. Different variations of this, but each walking out saying, I'm voting for Donald Trump because of what I experienced here today. You know, Tulsi, when Mark Cuban says Donald Trump doesn't like to surround himself with smart smart, intelligent, independent women. It's hard not to see that's a direct shot at Kellyanne Conway, Kaylee McEnany, Linda McMahon, a whole host of other women as well, including you, Tulsi. It seems like it's a direct shot at someone like you. You know, it, there, there's actually something much darker that he is he is implying there because the premise of his statement is that uh, he believes that Liz Cheney and, and female warmongers like her are what defines strong women. Mm -hmm. uh, they are they are hypocrites and cowards because when you look at people like Liz Cheney, she is eager to send our troops into harm's way. She is eager to advocate for more stupid wars, but she and other warmongers like her will never volunteer to put their lives on the line for these military adventures they're advocating in. I just finished a couple of days of Army Reserve duty at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, and yesterday morning, I stood there on the graduation field and saw a few hundred brand new soldiers graduating from basic training probably a thousand family members there to celebrate them. And it was so moving. And, and, and I was thinking about people like Liz Cheney when I was watching them because these are the young men and women who will pay the price potentially with their lives if people like Liz Cheney, Dick Cheney, and Kamala Harris are allowed to be in power. This is one of the many reasons why I'm so strongly advocating for and supporting for President Trump to go back to the White House, to end wars, not start them. Exactly right. The closer you are to it, the more serious you should be about how you utilize those young souls. Uh, Tulsi, real quick, where are you going in the closing days? Where will you be hitting the trail on behalf of the campaign? <laughs> We got, we got about 72 hours until election day. I was just looking at the schedule. I will be in Georgia later today, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, and North Carolina before Monday night. Before Monday night. All right. There we go. Well, thanks for being with us this morning, Tulsi. We appreciate Thank you, you so much. Thanks. Good to see you. Thanks, Tulsi. Thank you. Nice to see you. No question, you guys. War and Peace is on the ballot. And this trade between the Cheneys and then... Tulsi Gabbard and RFK is one of the most fascinating things. And that unity moment she talked about, this is a truly unified ticket. And I love what she said about the characterization of what it means to be a strong woman. Yes, uh, I'd love how that. How they frame that. That was, thank you, I thought that was brilliant. I think it's important to point out, like, this is not an isolated thing coming from Mark Cuban. As much as, I don't, and I don't know if they're trying to distance themselves from his comments at all, but I, I don't know about you guys, but I found it pretty offensive when I heard Michelle Obama and many other people from the Kamala Harris campaign telling women to lie to their husbands. There's a commercial about that. There's literally an ad. Yeah. Like, this is their narrative is basically that saying but not saying, 
you're too weak to have an open dialogue and conversation with your boyfriend or your husband or your partner, so you should just sneak around their back and smile and lie to them about who you're voting for. I, I found it completely demeaning and something that yeah. reinforces exactly what Mark Cuban is saying. As though any woman, all women are out there like hiding it from their husbands. No, no, we're proud. We're voting for Donald J. Trump if that's okay with everybody. That's right. Not hiding anything. What we're seeing play out now is just what I experienced for many, many years. I remember going back to 2016 when Hillary Clinton was running for president and I was a vice chair of the DNC. I resigned so that I could campaign against her and uh, warn the American people about how dangerous she would be as commander in chief. And over and over, I got asked by people in the media, people in the party leadership, how dare you as a woman not support this person who could break through the glass ceiling and be the first female president? And my response to every person who asked me this question is I'm offended that you're reducing me and my intelligence to my body parts. I experienced over and over in 2020 when I was a candidate for president uh, on the Democratic ticket, how really when it comes right down to it, Danica said it perfectly, it is the hypocrisy for a party that claims to stand for women, that claims to be the feminists, that claims to want to lift up women in every possible way. Turns out they only like a certain kind of woman, and that certain kind of woman is one who will spout their talking points toe the line and do whatever it is the powers that be in the Democrat Party and the Washington establishment want you to be. So knowing that, one of the many reasons I left the party, I was never going to fit in in that environment, but it shouldn't be a surprise to us that they chose Kamala Harris to be their nominee because she is doing exactly that. She is reading the talking points, literally, uh, gets lost when the teleprompter freezes and stops working. And uh, it is the continuation of the kind of figurehead political leaders that they seek out, people who they know that they can uh, control. Uh, and this is to me what's so dangerous about a, com a potential Kamala Harris presidency. Uh, and I can say this as a person who continues to serve in uniform in the army, as a veteran of multiple deployments. It's quite terrifying to think of a Kamala Harris's commander in chief who is being fed orders by someone that voters never elected, number one, and number two, someone who will feel the need to mask her insecurity and weakness in order to try to project strength and use my brothers and sisters in uniform uh, as, as the means of doing so. Uh, so it's those among many reasons why I'm so committed to helping get President Trump reelected and sent back to the White House.